And I would love to stay up here and say, you know what? I am proactive in everything I do. I've always been proactive. But who I am today is not who I was. Kind of like I said last time I was here, my life today is dramatically different. 17 years ago, I was addicted to cocaine. I was an alcoholic. I overdosed on cocaine. I was dead. My heart stopped. If it wasn't for some very prompt service with EMTs, I wouldn't be standing here today. So that was my door. The opportunity, I overdosed. As horrific as that is, the next day, I got out of the hospital. That night, I went out and got high. Because I wanted to prove to the drugs that, you know what? You weren't going to get the best of me. You weren't going to win. Like, that was the battle. And after a few, about a year or so of pain, I, moved, I was up in New York City back then. I was living up there. I moved back to Delaware County. For those who are in Delaware County, Mansdown Avenue and Baltimore Pike. I living right there, not on the corner, but in the apartments right there. And I was watching this infomercial at 1 o'clock in the morning. And it was this infomercial for this guy that said, I can change your life in 30 days if you buy my tapes. And I'm like, garbage! You can't change my life, you don't know my life! Who are you to tell me how to live my life? But I heard one thing as I picked up the remote control to change the channel that kept me from changing the channel. And that was your past does not equal your future. Think about this, folks. Your past does not equal your future. It doesn't matter what happened a moment ago, a week ago, a year ago, a decade ago. Right now is a new moment, it's a new opportunity. You can decide right now to change everything. Is it easy? Heck no. But, but neither is dealing with the pain of not being where you want to be. So I watched this infomercial, went to bed. Got up the next morning, did my thing, and I watched, and one o'clock in the morning came around, and the same infomercial, and there I was watching again. Then, went to bed, got up, did my thing. The third night, I don't understand why threes are magical sometimes, but it is. The third night, I was watching this infomercial, and I'm like, I am not going to be the idiot who watches the same infomercial over and over and over again, like a fool. I mean, it's not like it's a different program, it's the same people, same infomercial. So I started flipping the channels to something much more empowering, much more important, like I Love Lucy reruns. But I kept going back, because I believe there's things called basic truths. And when you hear a basic truth, it kind of grabs you at your soul. Maybe, maybe someone out there can relate to this. Someone tells you something that you don't want to hear, and you try to dismiss it. That's not true, that's not true, that's not true. But the more you talk about it, the more you realize whether you want to admit it or not. It's true. The truth is true. It doesn't matter who delivers it or how you slice it. The truth is true. So I got up and I started getting ready for bed and my head was going. And I asked myself one question. My life changed in a moment. I mean, get off drugs in a moment. I didn't deal with the reasons why I did drugs in a moment. But I took advantage of an opportunity. The door was open and it was closing fast. And I asked myself, what if it worked? And my brain goes, it won't work, stupid! You tried it before. You tried everything before. Nothing works. Here's a piece of crap. And I'm like, no. For once, I said, no. For once, I didn't buy my own rhetoric. I said, well, what if it worked? And I said, I'll get off drugs. That was it. I didn't realize, I had no idea what I was up against. I had no idea the challenges or the work. I just knew I had to stop using it. So I picked up the phone that moment. I knew if I waited till tomorrow, I wouldn't have called. I would talk myself out of it. Right? I'll do it tomorrow. Do it tomorrow. I heard somebody describe it once as the Mayana syndrome. Right? We just keep pushing it off, pushing it off, pushing it off. But the truth of the matter is, action is a precursor to change. You must step through that and, and take action and step through that door of opportunity in the moment. If you put it off, it's going to be gone. So I got the tapes and began listening. And I began changing my life and really changing who I was. And 
and began taking massive action. So I think sometimes in life what we do is we fool ourselves and we think that movement is progress. So we take a little action, we get excited, but guess what happens? We fall short, we lose momentum. We sign up, right? Has anyone ever signed up for a gym, a workout facility? Raise your hand. Be honest, go ahead, raise your hand. Yes, now, you went all the time? <laughs> I remember one time I signed up and said, I am going to get myself in shape. First, let me go and buy some gadgets that would help me. So I bought my iPod and my Nike Plus, I bought all those things, right? Got the new sneakers, the cool sweats, the cool shorts, right? The energy bars, all that stuff. And I did it for a couple of weeks, and guess what happened? Mm -hmm. Right? No one else did that, right? Just me? Yeah. So if you want anything in life, you really gotta take action. And you gotta take consistent action. But you know, one of the things that's always fascinated me growing up is why do we do what we do? As a child, I used to be the type of kid that took stuff apart. Now, if I took stuff apart, I was curious about how it worked. Now, when I took stuff apart, I wasn't the type of person I had to put stuff back together. I'd be like, Mom, why are there four springs left? Do you think it really matters? It, it, to me, it was all about understanding why things worked. So as I kind of got into this field, began studying myself, I became fascinated with why as human beings we do what we do. Why do, we, why do some people seem to achieve and some people fall short? Some people to overcome, yet some people begin to, to get caught up in their own lives, caught up in the challenges, never seem to be able to get ahead. Why do some people with every opportunity fail? And people with no opportunity, it seems like, with everything against them, they succeed. And I realized that one of the biggest things that prevents us is fear. Fear of change. Fear of the unknown. Fear of getting your hopes up. Of expectations not met. Of being let down again. Feeling that we're not enough, we're not worthy. Feeling that maybe we're not good enough at what we do. Feeling that we'll lose approval. I have a friend, she actually emailed me the other day, and she said, Joe, what should I do? And she described her situation. She's trying to get her life together, but all her family's doing is saying, you will never amount to anything. You'll never become anything. You'll never achieve anything. And she goes, what do I do? All my family is pulling me down. I said, do you have friends? She goes, yes. She goes, what are they doing? They said, they're pulling me down too. They're doing behaviors I'm trying to get rid of, Joe. I said, you gotta find yourself a new environment. She goes, I don't know how. I said, you already started. I invite you to come to one of my seminars. With my guest. Because the difference that makes the difference truly is the environment you spend time in. My mom told me this. I didn't learn this until back then, but I realized she told me about valuable lesson. She said, Joe, she said this about every girl I dated in high school and college. She goes, Joe, you sleep with dogs, you'll wake with fleas. I go, Mom, what the heck are you talking about? I don't get it. But she was right. We call it E squared, empowering environment. This is an empowering environment. There are some people in this room who are committed to improving their lives. There are people in this room, Arlene, you're an example of this, who has who's taken themselves there to this system, to the, to the opportunities that are given to you here. Not just opportunities, programs, and scholarships, but opportunities for the people in this room who are going in the same direction as you. Sometimes the best thing to do is not to follow the crowd, but look for the people who are moving in the direction that you want to go in. 